For donations, I ask that you donate $1 per video. Thank you. The fate of one who committed seppuka to one's uh, to right one's dishonor, dishonorable or careless ways was unknown, but it was believed that he or she reincarnated into a better existence. Dai must have gone into that better existence, Aki supposed, something he wished for himself one day. And so he was not sad like Augi, who had been fonder of the man than Aki. Strangely, Dai had favored Aki and not Augi, but nonetheless, Augi had looked up to him as a sort of father, and now that he was gone, he wasn't sure what exactly to do with himself, except to follow Aki around, sort of like how Aki had followed him around as a boy. And so, Aki did not mind it, and figured it was his duty as a brother to Augi to help him follow the path of the Order, despite his sadness and grief. They attended the burial. Their hoods up and katanas sheathed on their backs, they looked rather mysterious and quite a few of the younger women were eyeing and staring at them as they prayed with the monk who gave the prayer and speech at the burial. Aki supposed that he'd see one of them later on, or another woman, uh, and Augie was too distraught to think of it. Nonetheless, w one could, t could not tell what their faces, stone and cold, a proud image of Bushido, the practice of samurai, as each of them had been samurai before joining the order and when they'd become assassins as well, Dai decided they would be both. And so the order allowed them to remain under Dai's supervision until now. Now, they supposed they would return to the West, where the order had more of a presence and with them, Jonathan and Eric, who stood beside them, bowing their heads like thoughtful Loranites. Aki supposed that was good for them, but he did not believe in their god. Still, it did not matter, as their code dictated the same, to do what is right for the people of nations, and not what is evil and unjust. This meant that, this meant that any relig religion, so long as it did not break their credence, was accepted, to an extent. Despite this, there was still much warring and suffering amongst the people Aki knew. He had fought in countless battles, Aki alongside him, and bore more than one scar to prove it. They were fast men, <clears throat> faster than all of the East and all of the West, and they hardly lacked in size. Nonetheless, they stood at the burial modest and complacent, something that always put Aki on edge to be so agreeable to the customs of the people, the people who had treated him like dirt when he was younger. He knew his place, however, and Aki would not stop reminding him Though either in good jest or good nature, which is why he was still he's still a brother to Aki and always would be. When the burial was done and the monk had and the monk had said all he had to, to say, they returned to the inn to rest again. And then later on, found themselves at a bar where they drank sake and conversed. Jonathan and Eric were surprisingly somewhat interesting people. They had traveled to deserts and mountains, jungles, tundras. In fact, they'd been all over their continent or realm of Aki, of Akai, speaking maybe half a dozen languages or more. Aki only knew his own, Akai, the same name as the realm, as they had not visited many places in the west, but rather had stayed in Akai. Aki, however, knew some Lor Lornish, enough to get by, and when they'd vis visited there the, just the once, Aki relied heavily on him, remaining aloof and mysterious there, at least that's how he liked to picture it. He probably just looked clueless. When they were done speaking, they returned to the inn, rested, and when they woke from the next morning, there was a courier with a message delivered. Aki took the stamped and sealed scroll, read it, and informed Aki that they were to meet with a new emperor, Emperor Jin, the younger brother of the now-deceased Emperor Dai. Should we go, Augie asked. They won't, they won't kill us, Aki muttered, though we were there when, when, he, had, when he began to commit sepulchre. What will Jin think, Augie asked. I don't know him well, but from what I've heard of him, he'll be glad to have, th have the throne. Yet disheartened that his brother decided to die, we should be fine, Aki said with a sigh. Augie nodded. Let's go, let's go then. 
and so they left the inn, telling Eric and Jonathan to stay put, and that they'd meet them back at the inn when they were finished speaking to Jin at the palace. They didn't protect, pr protest this time, but remained patient, something that Aki had argued was important to do the night prior. To his surprise, he was happy that they had listened. Aki and Augie found the stables where their horses were tied and rode them into the palace courtyard, making quite the heroic appearance, despite the fact that a, Western, that a Westerner had had to save them from insanity just two days ago. They were greeted again by the two sisters, May and Emma, Ima, along with a host of other relatives and important people, most of whom Aki and Augie were not entirely familiar with. Dai had kept them mostly a secret, and their missions and tasks were always under the table and in favor of the order which Dai had supported in private. Aki wondered if Jin would do the same and suspected that he knew of their ways and who they might be. They dismounted and the people stepped back, allowing them entry into the palace, where sat, where sat Jin, a worrisome expression on his face. He seemed distraught, and Aki did not like it. Aki, too, was unsure of the man. Suddenly, the doors closed behind them and they were left alone in the room with the Emperor awaiting their conversation.